Welcome back. It's Yellow Hammer Radio. What's up, Yellow Hammer Nation? You can tweet the program at YHN Radio, 866 551 9933. The numbers to the show. Locally in Birmingham, it's 941 1011. Three great ways to hear the program 95.3 FM, 1260 AM, and of course, the Superstation. 101.1. Yep, we'll catch you three ways to Sunday. Glad to be back in the studio. Appreciate Scott Beeson hanging over for a yeah. little while there. We had some good laughs at the end in the second segment. That was fun. I was on assignment this morning, which put me a little bit behind. We've got some really awesome Warrior Wednesday stuff coming your way tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. We're really excited about the Warrior Wednesday podcast. WarriorWednesday.com. Find out a little bit more. That's why I was absent for the first 10 minutes of the show. Yes. But I'm glad to be back. And I'm, I tried to make that clear without going into detail. There, there you There was go. a legitimate well, I, reason. There was a legitimate reason, and I saw a perfect opportunity for a shameless plug for Warrior Wednesday. And so I thought I would take it. Why not, you know? Yeah. Why not? Why not? As we come back on Yellow Hammer Radio, we are live from the call KS.com, heating and air studio, Alabama license number 11120. I am Scott Chambers. Andrea Tice here. And joining us in the studio, we are so happy to have with us Jefferson County Commissioner David Carrington. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. Good to be with y'all. Well, glad to have you with us in studio. You are a candidate for governor of the great state of Alabama. I am. I am. What made you decide, I want to take on the office of governor? Why David Carrington? Well, we surely didn't start with that ambition. We started... uh, with the ambition of cleaning up Jefferson County uh, eight years ago, I guess. Uh, the county was in quite a mess, in a ditch. Uh, had some significant problems, uh, $3.2 billion of sewer debt, sewer receiver that planned to double rates and then double them again in mm. two years, and mm-hmm. $100 million of general obligation debt. We had the hospital that was losing 10 to $15 million a year. We were running a county home that was losing 2 to $3 million a year. And so... I had a successful experience as the president of the city council at Vestavia, and we had some challenges mm-hmm. at that time. So I, I decided to run for county commission. Um, I'm not a career politician, really strongly believe in term limits, so I was only going to serve two terms in Vestavia. I was going to go home, run my business, enjoy life, and then the county commission position came open. I said, well, you know, I've learned something about cleaning up messes. I'll go clean up another one. Well, that uh, you bigger, did. A bigger, <laughs> messier one. A bigger. And, and so, uh, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm sort of the janitor. You know, I'm going to come clean up the mess by uh, created by other people. And obviously the state of Alabama is, I don't think very many people would argue with me when I say that it's a mess and it needs to be cleaned up. And right. so, you know, I have experience cleaning up messes in a city government, a County Let's talk government. about that. When yep. you when you were on the county commission, Jefferson County was in bankruptcy, and you were helping the city, uh, helping the county, and you guys actually emerged from bankruptcy, if my memory serves me correctly, a little over a year ahead of schedule, right? That's right. Uh, to go back, we weren't in bankruptcy when I took office. We were bankrupt. Right. You know, like the state is bankrupt. <laughs> sure. Like right. the federal government's bankrupt. bankrupt we were right. actually bankrupt. We weren't in bankruptcy. Right. We spent a full year trying to negotiate our way out. Mm-hmm. That wasn't going to happen. So on the last day of our first year in office, we filed what was at the time the largest bank, municipal bankruptcy I in U.S. That. history. Mm-hmm. Then we spent, we, it was estimated at best case we'd get out in 36 months at, a, at an approximate cost of $40 million. We shaved a year off of that. It was 25 months, nice. saved about $12 million. The county's fiscally and operationally restored now. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've been described as the boring government. And sometimes uh, uh, I think, you know, my, my theme ought to be make Alabama boring again. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, and it, it, it's, a, it's a great motto when people are just coming out of scandal and uh, financial issues. Uh, all of a sudden, boring doesn't seem so bad. Yeah, I would, what people I would much like, rather Montgomery politics be boring than the excitement we've had over the past two years. That's another word for <laughs> unintrusive. There you, you go. You know, and it, getting the job done and staying out of right, people's hair. Right. You know, that's exactly the point I was going to say. In the old days, we used to say we want the trains to run on time. That by that we meant we don't want to think about it. Right. We just want to happen and be cost effective. And so, uh, you know, Jefferson County's government, quite frankly, is boring. And that's a great way to be. And, and I would love to be sitting right here eight years from the day and we talk about what's happening. And I go, I don't know. We're just really boring, you know? Yeah. I, I know. I like that. 
Uh, I like that. Okay, that, well, we might mentality. make that our new tagline then. Make <laughs> Alabama boring again. You, you might want to talk to some consultants about that first. <laughs> I got two. <laughs> I've got two that have the pulse of the state right yeah, here. Right, right. On the outside, it sounds great, but when you break it down, uh, I don't know. there's going to be someone that's going to call that out in a campaign ad. I'm just could saying. You, okay. <laughs> okay, well. Could you? In yeah. politics, yeah. The well, that's, right. that's true. Yeah. We're strategizing on the radio. How Could you nice. do a little adverb there and say "boringly productive"? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, maybe that's, that. That's, I don't know. that's good. We just just do it, right? Just do it. That's all we want. Maybe we could use that. You think that theme no, has been used yet? Basically, what you're saying, <laughs> if, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Carrington, is you're saying no drama. No drama. We don't want drama, both from our the actions and behaviors of our governor. And or the sloppy, messy use of money, taxpayer money, on the part of the government. No right, drama. We, we had the opportunity uh, uh, to actually cut government more than 25 percent. We had to. The county has to run a balanced budget. We don't have a choice. And so uh, with the challenges we faced, we actually uh, cut services. We reinvented services. We outsourced services. I'll give you an example on, on the, uh, uh, the hospital. We were losing 10 to $15 million a year. We had 37 patients a night. Uh, the other hospitals in town had a 45% bed occup- uh, unoccupied. Yeah. And so what we do now is we actually contract with the other hospitals, and we pay them for those 37 patients a night. By that, we took a 10 to $15 million deficit, and we turned it into a surplus. And mm-hmm. so it's earmarked funds, which is a problem in this state. So you have to spend earmarked funds for earmarked reasons. So we've taken the surplus now and we've invested in expanding primary care and specialty care to the indigent, which then lowers the number of people that have to go to the hospital. We also have funded a dental clinic. If you're familiar with uh, uh, medical terms or issues at all, many issues can be found in, in dental or, or originate there. Yeah, and so by doing that, true. we're trying to... S- prevent people from going to primary and specialty care and preventing from the hospital. That's just one example of, of what government can do. You know, everybody says, how are you going to get more money? I'm not convinced we need more money yet. Right. I, I really am not. Now, I will tell you, and probably some of the viewers won't like it, once I'm absolutely positively convinced that we're spending every dollar the way it should be spent, if we still need money, then I'll go to the people and say, okay, what services do you want us to cut? Or do you want to uh, give government more money? But this state government is so far away from that kind of a conversation. I've been told that only one department in the state has a tr- strategic plan. You know, I wouldn't dream of forming a business without a business plan or a strategic sure. plan. Sure. No, right. absolutely not. And, and so one of the first things we'll do, we'll, hire, we'll, we'll recruit and retain cabinet members that are experienced in a particular discipline. For example, at a Medicaid, we'll go find us a, an experienced hospital or a medical administrator, not a doctor, an administrator, uh-huh. and we'll charge them with coming together with creative solutions to lower the cost of, of that program. The first thing we'll ask them to do, though, is develop a strategic plan. What are we doing? What should we be doing? What shouldn't we be doing? How can we do what we should be doing mm-hmm. more effectively, cost effectively, and efficiently? And then we'll see. If we need more money or we need less money, I can tell you Jefferson County needs less money than the day I walked in the door. But everybody says, oh, you need more money. Money's the solution to the problem. Well, you know, that may not play well with people in government, but it's music to the voters' ear and the taxpayers' ear that you're actually saying my first conclusion or my knee-jerk reaction is not going to be more money to address the problem, but it's going to be looking into the details of how we function. And it sounds to me, if you're asking you're going to ask as governor, you know, uh, hypothetically, you're going to ask departments within government to act like a business. Yeah. First, of th- one of the first things we're going to look at is the ABC board. I-, I still don't know why the state's in the liquor business. I was about oh. to ask the same question. Okay. Well, then what? ask me the next question because we've taken care of that. <laughs> no, that that's a wonderful. Why is Alabama in, in the liquor business? Well, in two more years, I'll be able to come back and tell you why we are or why we're not why going we're not. to be. There you and go. That's all I think. That would be my responsibility. I'm. This is a job interview. Mm-hmm. There's no incumbent, right? at least at this moment. Right. This is a job interview, so I'm trying to show my qualifications. The others will qual- so their qualification. We'll decide who's the most qualified. Andrea, I want to go make one comment and then give you a piece of data. Okay. The comment is, from this point on, will you please call me David? 
I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was calling you Mr. Carrington. That's okay. But there you went again. Okay. So I say the second the thing I want to say is Jefferson County has more than a thousand fewer employees than the day I walked in the door. Wow. Now I will tell you this. And the county is still working efficiently. We are. We need. But I was going to be realistic. Here's the realistic point. We need about 200 more. Sure. I mean, we really do. And actually, the number we've cut is closer to 1,500. So we need 200 more. And the analogy I use is we prune the tree. Right. You've got to prune the tree in order for it to grow. And now we can identify, you know what? We need one more person there, not 10. Yeah. We need right. two there, not 14. Where we're suffering right now, and I bet you most of your listeners will agree with me, is in roads and bridges. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yes. that's where we're funding. Yes. That's that's where we'll be funding going forward. So we've created a strategic plan of how we get back to fully restore government. But other than roads, I don't think government's fully restored. Remember the long lines at the courthouses? Yes. I, Gone. I yeah, that's Gone. right. Gone. No more. Right. So. Our guest is David Carrington, Jefferson County Commissioner and gubernatorial candidate for the great state of Alabama. We're going to come back and continue talking to David Carrington, and we're going to take some phone calls as well. If listeners have some questions from you, you can line those up right now at 866-551-9933. Questions for David Carrington. We will be back right after this live from the call KS.com Heating and Air Studio, Alabama license number 11120. Welcome back at Yellowhammer Nation. I am Scott Chambers. Andrea Tice here as well, and we're in studio with the Jefferson County Commissioner David Carrington. That's right. David, thanks for being with us here today. We appreciate it. You are running for governor of the great state of Alabama. A lot of people, you know, there have been a lot of names thrown around, people that's going to be jumping in that race. Looking at the uh, field of candidates that's out there right now, what makes David Carrington better than the other candidates that are in the race? Well, I was president of the second largest government in the state of Alabama during some very challenging times, and things are much better now, and the only government larger than Jefferson County in the state is the state. That's right. So I'm the only one that can make that claim. Uh, David, you mentioned that at one point you wanted to go back into your business. What, what, are, what do you do? We actually have the largest independently owned NASCAR memorabilia store. We're on the Internet. We formed that business in 1999. So I'm sitting here visiting with Uh y'all, and someone in Iowa is buying a Dale Earnhardt Jr. hat. Wait a minute. I need a hat. Isn't this a great country? (laughs) I I need a hat. You need a hat. (laughs) You you definitely need a hat. (laughs) It's a good thing you came in studio. This is interesting because Andrea has just now been introduced into the world of NASCAR. We took her out to Talladega. I went to Talladega. Oh, did you really? How would you like it? It was fantastic. I was down there. away from Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s pit. I I hung around and stalked the pit crew. That's all I could do. <laughs> well, my wife, the first time she went, she loved the pageantry, the color, the it's energy. Great. And so I, I think people that aren't fans can actually enjoy the race and the and the experience there. So that's what I do. Yes. That's well, interesting. Pays, that's how what pays the bills. There you go. That, that's it's, very nice. It's not uh, politics for anyone. <laughs> You but know, that shows that you, you run a large-scale business, and you've been doing that in the private sector and the government sector, and you are ready to take on the state of Alabama when you look at the fiscal challenges Alabama faces. One of the biggest problems Alabama has is they cannot balance a state budget. Why is that? Well, by definition, they have to balance it, but they continue to steal from Peter to pay Paul. <laughs> right. You know, we talk about education funding, but if you look at the education budget, there's a lot of things that are being paid for out of the education budget Mm -hmm. that's not education. And so part of this whole strategic plan is to try to get at a table like this and put everything in the right bucket to see exactly where where we stand. Mm -hmm. Uh, So uh, I believe uh, that we ought to keep separate budgets. At one time, I didn't think that. But I've now observed after study that money will be stolen out of education to support the general fund. So we ought to have separate budgets. To the converse, the problem in the general fund is we have no revenue growth. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the taxes are not revenue growers, so you continue to steal. I like a proposal by a senator from North Alabama. I think it's Senator Busman, so I'll give him credit if he wants it or not. Um, <laughs> that says we need to not we can keep separate budgets, but we need to combine uh, or allocate the revenue. So instead of earmarking revenue into each pocket, we have one revenue bucket, and we say and we do a mathematical calculation. Mm-hmm. The education budget gets 
70 percent, and the general fund budget gets 30 percent. As the revenues grow, then both are sharing in the growth. The I way see. we have it now, with no growth in the general fund, you have two options. You can either steal from education or you can raise taxes. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to create a system to where we don't have to raise taxes, that we make everything more efficient and make everything live on its own weight. Now, exactly. well, let's talk to gas tax for a minute. I don't think very many people think that uh, our roads are up to the snuff of where they need to be. First thing I hear from many people is, are you spending the money efficiently and effectively now? I don't know. I haven't studied it yet. We will study it and we'll decide. But let's say at the end of the day, we decide we need some revenue for gases. Mm -hmm. That is one situation where I think it should be earmarked. Because if you put a gas tax, it should not go to pay for mental health. It should go right. to pay for roads. Right. The way I would prefer to see that happen is the legislature authorizes the counties. If the county commission and the voters want to approve, uh, approve a three-cent sales tax or five cents to improve the roads, that's fine. That's right. representative government. I don't think necessarily uh, Jefferson County, uh, we're a donor county should have to pay if we're going to if our citizens are going to pay taxes it should be spread all throughout, all throughout the, the state, state. or right. it should be spread because we benefit from better roads elsewhere yeah. but it shouldn't be one third of our dollars shouldn't go elsewhere you know I, i'm all for one and one for all i mean but but uh, that allocation needs to be thought through better i like that idea because basically the taxpayer is seeing an an ROI a return on investment yeah to that, their immediate area, right. not, not somewhere else. Right. I mean, like I say, I mean, we're a donor county. If if we collected three dollars, we would get two. Mm-hmm. I think maybe even a little less than two. Very interesting. You know, Scott mentioned he brought up this issue of of um, going in and and you, you were asking why government can't seem to budget right to balance, balance the budget. budget. Do you think? Um, that part of it is just this political mentality where we can't say no, we can't fire people, we can't say the hard things that need to be said. And did you encounter that when you took on the job at Jefferson County as commissioner? Yes. Okay. Um, you know, several things. You know, you start with the strategic plan. We've got to go back to that. Yes. Then you force people to live within their means. You know, and that's that's the part we don't want to do. I mean, there's one revenue source I've been told that was earmarked, and let's say they needed a hundred thousand dollars a year, mm-hmm. but it was earmarked funds. They might be getting four or five hundred thousand dollars a year from the earmarked funds. So there's no reallocation of resource with all the earmarking. About ninety-two percent of our dollars are earmarked, and that creates uh, gluts on one case sure. and, and starve it on another yeah, case. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, and you asked a question, Andre, and I, I got off track. What what was the? Well, we were just. What did you encounter? Uh, right. In the as you took on your job. Well, to, I mean, we had to reduce a lot of headcount. And you, you know, basically, it, you had to go in and uh, 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 do reduce, the hard thing. Which we is had to say, surgically remove yeah. people. I hate to say that. Uh, you know, and and I don't take great pride in that. Uh, I blame the prior commissions that let it get bloated. Sure. And, you know, we're getting ready to do a refinancing. And one of the things I've written a letter for my future commissioners is once we're in equilibrium, cut the tax. Uh I mean, who says it's got to be 1%? Why can't it be three quarters of a percent or Mm -hmm. seven eighths of a percent or whatever? Don't let government grow. Are you just going to get back in the same situation that you were before? But we did encounter that. Um, You know, we touched on it. I don't know how much time we did. We made a decision for the county home. We could talk about the nursing home if we have more time. We made a decision there. We've partnered with the Humane Society on Animal Control, a phenomenal program that maybe we can talk about next time. So uh, we've discontinued some programs. You know, we just went through government and said in, out, in, out, in, Mm -hmm. out. And you know what? But, I don't get any complaints. But that not that exactly what a business has to do if they find that they need to generate more money or bring in more profit? They don't just say automatically, let's raise the price on our product. No, because let's you're in a competitive environment exactly. and you're going to go out of business. That's yeah. part of the problem. Government's not competitive. We're a mo- monopoly. They don't have a mindset that's you know that actually views the money as not their own, right. as someone else's they're supposed to steal. And I know we're running out of time, but I have to say this real quick. I wish I had a dollar for every time somebody told me, well, it's the state's money or it's the federal government's money. And I, you can go back and see the record. I always said, it's our money. 
good it's, for it's you. It's not your money. It's, it's right. our money. And by exactly our, right. I mean uh, the, the uh, we citizens. We the taxpayer, right. We the yes, taxpayer. Right. It's not, there's not free money from the state. There's not free money from the federal government. Correct. Our guest is David Carrington, Jefferson County Commissioner, Alabama gubernatorial candidate. I was looking at the schedule. I believe we originally had you scheduled to uh, 1215. We, we went a segment early, but can you stay with us anyway? Yeah, yeah perfect. I'm committed because, to 1215. Okay, perfect, because we do have some callers that want to get some questions oh, in. So we'll have David Carrington with us for one more segment. We've got a question right now from uh, Dave Richardson, our producer, dealing with taxes. He wants to know what you would do uh, as governor. Dave? Do you believe in the fair tax or the flat tax? What do you think about that? You know, um, I'm an old man, <laughs> and, and throughout my history, I think I've believed in everything because I don't think what we've got now is working very well. Um, you know, I think it merits to, to really seriously look at the fair tax. That's all that, you can. Wow, that's, that's all a you good. Can say? That was a good, easy question and good. a good, easy answer. Good question, good, easy answer. I like that. Our guest is David Carrington, Alabama gubernatorial candidate. We'll come back in hour two with your phone calls at eight six six five five one nine nine three three. Get your questions in for David Carrington. We'll take them in hour two. Jay Holland's got to look at news next on the Yellow Hammer News Radio Network. Welcome back. It's Yellow Hammer Radio, our numero dos, which means our number two. For those of you listening in Winfield, shout out from Yellow Hammer Radio. I am Scott Chambers. Andrea Tice here as well with a third person in studio. Yes. David Carrington here. Yes. Oh, look at that. He's, he's on top of things. Gubernatorial candidate David Carrington. So how long did you uh, kind of mull over this idea to run for governor to know Alabama needs change? Alabama needs help. The day we exited bankruptcy. Ah. December 3rd, 2013. You know, I think I mentioned in this interview, I'm a strong believer in term limits. I don't know if it's two terms or three terms. I, I'm not going to argue mm -hmm. that. But I felt I set a vision and articulated some goals for the county. Mm -hmm. If today was May 2010 and we were running for county commissioner, I would say I want to recruit a professional county manager to separate the legislative and executive branches of government done. I wanted a right-sized government to live within our means, done. I didn't know our means was going to go down more than 25 percent, but done. We wanted to resolve the sewer debt crisis with no new taxes or clean water fees, done. I wanted to restore the public's trust in their elected county officials, every measure, that's done. We're the boring government. And I wanted to <laughs> jumpstart our economic development efforts. And last year, Jefferson County led the state in announced projects in investment dollars, and we've done more than a billion and a half in the last two years. Done. So I set my goals. We achieved the goals. Time to move on. And so I started really seriously thinking about running for governor. December the 3rd, 2013. Maybe I went home and took a nap. <laughs> December the 4th, 2013. What a, what a great proving ground for you. You went in and you, and you um, untangled a snarled financial bureaucratic mess and you haven't seen my little handout have you no and the thing that the uh, point number four in my vision is untangling the mess in montgomery yeah use the exact same word it's not it's untangling it's a spaghetti down there it's yeah. an interrelated thing and you know you have to know how to develop strategic plans and put put things in the right bucket so you can actually mm -hmm. start looking at buckets. And one of the things we did, if we have a moment, was animal control. Yeah, let's hear about that because about. this is a uh, this is a very interesting story of what you guys have done in Jefferson County with animal control. I want our listeners to hear this. This is We do have fantastic. people on the phone lines, and we yes, are we not do. going to forget them, so hang on. But we do want to hear yeah, about Yeah, we'll talk to Lynn control. in just a moment. Well, we'll, we'll talk real quick. Uh, to answer the questions. We'll do yes, no, I don't know. How about that? Okay. Animal control in Jefferson County, we were spending about $400,000 a year. We needed to spend more money. We knew that. We needed a new facility. Mm -hmm. The roof was leaking. It was horrible for the animals and the workers. That was going to cost about $2.5 million. Instead of saying, well, let's give them another $200,000 a year and build another building. We did a joint venture with the local Animal Humane Society. Now the Humane Society is responsible for animal control. In the old days, about 90% of the animals were euthanized. Mm -hmm. uh, today, about 90% of the animals are adopted. The county still pays $400,000 a year. So were the animals in the old days euthanized 
because it was seven days? Yes, some were, but, but some of them just needed a little helping hand. The Humane Society has done a joint venture with Auburn University to where an Auburn vet student got to do two to four surgeries a year before they graduated. Now they come here for two weeks and do 20 or 30 surgeries. Amazing. Tuskegee is now going to join the program. That so even increases it. That's we're, incredible. We're, we're still spending $400,000 a year. Instead of 90% of the animals being put to sleep, mm -hmm. now 90% of the animals, it might be 87 or whatever. Or, and the only animals that are put to sleep are the ones that, that can't be healed, that the doctor right. doesn't have the ability to do it. So This is amazing. A, a county as large as Jefferson County, Alabama, for that to be happening with the number, at least over 85% are being adopted out. That's right. That is an amazing story. If you look at shelters around the country, I've never heard of a municipality that's so large that adopts that many. That's but, amazing. Well, in the show, and I'm going to give you, I'm going to always be full disclosure, there are needs for animals in other cities and, and states and counties, and they're asking us to provide animals. So I don't want to mislead the listeners that every animal is being adopted in Jefferson or Shelby. That doesn't County. matter where they're, they're adopted. They're being adopted. They're being, they're being adopted. placed. They're not right. being euthanized. So this is That's just amazing. like this is a win-win not only for the animals, but the people that work in Jefferson County at these shelters and the people who come from the colleges that are learning and getting some experience under their belt. And, and the they, taxpayers. It's And the taxpayers. You know, so it's a win-win-win-win. It, yeah. it really is. But, you know— all you need is someone who's willing to ask questions, not yeah. give answers. I, I don't know all the answers. What I've learned how to do is ask questions and not take a flippant answer and drill down and drill down and drill down until you get to the core answer. Wow. So, That's exciting. Yeah, I find that very exciting. It's 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 getting, you know, taking care of business from the ground up. You know, we, we heard before in one of the previous campaigns, Alabama needed a doctor. Alabama needed a doctor. We were in such dire straits. Well, it turns out the scalpel was broken and, and the scruples as well. You know, yeah, it's very right. interesting yeah. what happened there. And so, um, yeah, I, I, li I like your approach. I, I really Thank like you. your approach. Our guest is David Carrington, Jefferson County Commissioner, gubernatorial candidate for the great state of Alabama. And you are standing by on the phone lines at 866-551-9933. Let's go to Gadsden, Alabama, where we have Brother Phil standing by. Phil, what's on your mind today? Good afternoon, Scott. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Good afternoon. I'm really, I'm really interested. Uh, we just have seen our president fly over to Saudi Arabia and remind everyone that it's about the jobs, jobs, jobs. So I'm glad that you're able to do something for the animals who are in need of shelter, but what are you going to do for the families who are in need of revenue? Uh, okay, I think it's a great thing, and I'm going to tell you to go to davidcarringtonforus.com and look at my vision because one of my four points is we need to unlock jobs in, in and up. And what do I mean by in? We need to get more people in the workforce. Part of the problem now with, with uh, middle-income uh, jobs is that we have 500,000 working adults without a high school degree. I was with a place yesterday, and that's one of their requirements. So we need to get those 500 people with a high school degree so they can move up in the jobs that are available. They just can't find qualified people. That opens up minimum wage jobs for high school students and college right. students where they can get a work ethic. Yes. Now, I will say this, and, and i got two more blinking lights I'm looking at. Go to davidcarringtonforus.com, but um, I will say Jefferson County led the, the state – in dollars investments announced last year, we were number three on jobs announced, more than 1,000 jobs. We're getting ready to announce a new project in the next couple of weeks, 742 jobs in Jefferson County, and there's probably about 22 suppliers that we think will follow. Really? And wow. when do you think, when will you be making that announcement? Uh, next, you know, it's up to the CEO of that company as to arrange uh, the schedule. Okay. So soon. soon. Okay. Great question, Phil. We appreciate your call. Let's go to Lynn. You're on Yellowhammer Radio with David Carrington. Hi, Mr. Carrington. How are you? I'm doing great, Lynn. Yourself? Excellent. So we have right now an epidemic of student loan debt. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pick on Auburn here for a minute because I'm an alumni of Auburn. And We're eagle. At Auburn. <laughs> We're eagle. The average... I used to could say that. <laughs> yeah. The average undergraduate 
who's graduating right now from Auburn is carrying an average of $30,000, $30,000 in student loan debt. Would you be willing to support, because I'm going to be sponsoring a sunshine law for higher education that requires them, first of all, to divulge every single cost that that student and parent are going to pay while they're at that university. Wow. I pulled out an article on that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, she's got two. And number two, where that money goes. I have been duking it out with Auburn, the provost, the board of trustees, for two years now. And universities are not what they used to be. They used to be purely academic. They're money-making machines now, which is one thing. But the problem is, is that a lot of the students and the parents don't find out about these costs until they have already committed to the university. They're not allowed to make, you know, apples to apples comparisons about what is going to be the best value Mm -hmm. for them. And that is what is causing a lot of this student loan debt. Is that something that you would support? Yeah, I'm... I believe, I pulled out an article, maybe you wrote it, Lynn, two or three years ago and said this makes a lot of sense to me because we, again, David Carrington for us, so you can go to the website now. It's not that I'm going to run out and say it. I said many of our college graduates don't have a degree where the jobs are. There are plenty of jobs out there, trust me. Uh, They just need the right thing. So when I sit and I hear this one graduated in philosophy, this one graduated in English, we need to, I would would support, I'd have to see the exact bill by the way, because I've learned the hard way that you have a concept and then you get a bill. But And they're two different things. <laughs> they, 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 many times they're two different things. So there's one gotcha in the middle of it that you've got to watch. But I see no problem asking universities to say, your child wants to graduate in English. Uh, they graduated from Vestavia Hills High School, where my sons did. The probability it'll take them four and a half years to graduate. Here's the cost. And if they major in English, here's the job opportunity. So they can make, like Andre said, an ROI decision. They might decide English is the best place, and we need Shakespeare's and we need uh, uh, John Grisham's and all that. But but I think being able to make an informed decision is a good one. Absolutely. Well, the main thing is the cost. Most people are not aware of this, but colleges, I know Auburn is doing this. I can't speak to Alabama. They are now, they have created an entire new category called, Auburn calls it professional fees. Some other universities call it additional tuition. Basically what they're doing is that because they know they will get screamed at if they raise tuition, they are charging extra money and calling it some, wow. something else when, in fact, it is tuition. In my daughter's case, it was 40% of the tuition. So if the tuition's fifty six hundred dollars, she has to pay an additional twenty two hundred dollars a semester. Mm-hmm. None of which mm-hmm. was divulged to us when she went into that major. Let, let me tell you another dirty little secret. Only thirty two percent of jobs require a college degree. And True. we're we're we've structured our high schools to create college students right. instead of creating uh, wage earners going forward. You're absolutely right. When I look back, and, and thank you for your call, Lynn. That was a great call, great questions. Uh, when my dad graduated high school in 1978, he, he went in the military, but he did not get a college degree at the time. He had his high school degree, then went into the military. In those days, in the late 70s and early 80s, they were recruiting people to work you know, in industrial fields or in trades. My dad was able to make a lot of money a great living, way more than some of these students that are coming out now with a philosophy with a master's degree. in philosophy and, and a minor in listening to Drake. You know, <laughs> you, you learned a lot more and can make great six-figure salaries. True, true, true story, names changed to protect the innocent. Two students graduated from a local high school. One was book smart, mm-hmm. went to the University of Alabama, got admitted to the University of Alabama Law School, and is now a lawyer. The other was not interested in that and so went and worked it as a plumber's apprentice. Mm-hmm. Okay, now they're probably, let's say, 32, give or take. Uh, one is making the average salary for an attorney in Jefferson County, $68,000 a year. Mm-hmm. He has, as Lynn said, more than six figures of debt to pay off, right. uh-huh. and he's scrambling for clients. Yep. The other one's making $80,000 a year, 
has a home and a bass boat, zero debt, yep. and takes his phone off the hook because he's got too much business. Exactly. And I'm not slamming lawyers with that or, or, or not. praising plumbers, but there's more than one pathway to a good lifestyle. And no, absolutely, because for over 20, 30 years now, at least the past 20 years, it's it's those degrees that, that are made, they're put on a pedestal. Oh, you get a degree in this and you get a degree in that. You're great. But don't focus on a trade. That's why I love the uh, the project going on in Alabama. Go work Alabama. Micro is, is Alabama the works. Alabama yeah. works. I think it's phenomenal. Sixth Avenue, Sixth Avenue across from Carlisle's Barbecue. I guess I shouldn't have given the plug, the, the, but go by and fine. visit. High school students get to school, go to homeroom. They get on a the bus. They go on Sixth Avenue. They can learn carpentry. They can work, learn welding. They can learn electrical. Uh, they can learn masonry. Mm-hmm. They spend half of the day there learning a trade. And then they go back to school for the second half of the day. Yeah. These students are now going to – they've got jobs, offers, you know, making 12 to $15 an hour. Not Absolutely. a minimum wage job. No, now, no. isn't that a good high school career path? That's a wonderful and so path. We had a morning session beginning next semester. They'll have a morning and an afternoon. It's amazing. There were 100 students admitted to the program. There are 78 graduating. Why are seven, why, what happened to 22? They were fired. They didn't show up for work. They didn't, you know – you learn a life they, lesson. They learn a life lesson, and they yeah. might be better for it, as a matter of fact. No question. That is that is impressive. I love those numbers. We, we've got a full bank of phone calls for you, and I know your time is limited and valuable. Do you mind staying around for a few moments to take those calls? Can, can we end at 1230? We will end at 1230. That's guaranteed. And, yes. and, and then we'll, if you are so kind, I'll come back. Uh, that sounds okay. great. David Carrington is our guest, Jefferson County Commissioner, Alabama gubernatorial candidate. We will get to your phone calls, Jane, Mark, and Noni. Those are coming up next. Welcome back, Yellowhammer Nation. Our guest is David Carrington, Alabama gubernatorial candidate. A full stack of phone calls. Let's go right to Jane now on Yellowhammer Radio. What's on your mind, Jane? Hey, um, I just want to, I don't know if I heard right or not. Did Mr. Carrington say he fixed the sewer problem? Well, if he did, uh, why are the citizens of Burling, of Jefferson County still being saddled with that sewer debt? My, my sewer bill didn't go down. My sewer bill keeps going up every month. Why, why? Why are we saddled with it? Why did he say he'd fix that? that, that well, you're, you're asking him directly. You're asking him directly, Jane. Yeah. I mean, Jane, let's go. We, we shaved a billion and a half all that off that debt. There was capital improvements that but had I, to be. I didn't call that. I didn't Jane, call you that need debt. to let him respond, ma'am. Let, let's let him respond. I stole that money. Okay. I'm listening. All right. We're good. So we shaved a billion and a half off of the debt. We believe that's the capital improvements that were paid. We had a sewer receiver in charge that was going to double rates in one year and then double them again. We were able to stop that. Based upon the rates today, if we had still had the sewer, re- sewer receiver, it would take 28 years if all he did was double them twice. And we never had another increase to be where we are today on sewer rates. Fair yeah. enough answer. Thanks for your call, Jane. We appreciate it. Let's move on to Mark. You're on line two. What's on your mind, Mark? Hey, I've got two parts, if I can. I'll be quick. Uh, if I understood you right, you're all for the funding trade schools and, and helping the, the children learn a trade that don't want to go to college. Absolutely, 100%. Thank you, sir. And also, uh, on the, uh, the, I know it always comes up about the lottery. Would you be willing to, um, I know a portion of it needs to go to education, but divide it up for roads, uh, industry, um, helping the rural fire departments, you know, um, law enforcement and stuff like that, we can better the, the services? Well, you know, many states have a lottery. Primarily, it's for education, including our state right adjacent, uh, Mississippi. Their schools haven't improved with the money. You th- throwing money to a problem is not the solution. I, here's what I would say. We're going to develop a strategic plan for every department. I'm going to ask the legislature to combine the revenues and to whatever percentage they want to go there, they can do it. The lottery is so far away from my solution, 
I think if all we get more money, we're just going to waste more money. Yeah, I've never thought a lottery was ever a solution. Personally, would I support a lottery in the state of Alabama? I would have no problem with it personally if the money was appropriated properly. The only issue is Montgomery has never been able to properly appropriate money. That's why I'm personally, it's, it's not a solution, let's put it that way. If it came down to it and the people were to vote, would you support the people to vote on it, their yeah, right to vote? You know, I, I really, I think it's a sucker's bet. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing that the, that the governor proposed, the average Alabamian would have to spend $195 a year. It's not going to happen. Yeah. The overhead is a third, but it's a third at $195 a year. It, can, right. it could grow. I, I just, nobody's shown me why it makes sense. So, right. again, the legis- that's up to the legislature. Yeah. You're asking, you gave me yeah, your personal right. opinion. Yeah. I gave you my personal sure, opinion. Absolutely. I'm not going to lead the parade. I wonder, there's the answer right there. And yeah. that's the thing I like. A lot of candidates dance around that one. We know where you stand. Thank and you. And I appreciate that. One we more. got two more minutes, three more minutes. There, there you go. Yeah. One, one more call from a Nani here. You're on with David Carrington. Good afternoon. I'm liking what I'm hearing so far. The only reason why governments exist is to provide services to its constituents uh, that they can't provide for themselves. I would like to see, and would you agree with, uh, splitting up the time frames. I have to take off work to fit my time in between 8 o'clock and 5 o'clock to get a service done. Why not have services earlier? Make it, you know, to work more flexible for the consumer to get the services that the government provides. And I'll stand by and listen. Thanks, Donnie. I, I actually agree with you uh, in the principle of what you said government exists for. One of the things we did was uh, with our car tags is it's all online now. About 30% mm-hmm. of the people uh, purchase their tags online, and it's accelerating. We now have uh, one spot that the developers would have to go, you got to get uh, a permit to build. Then you've got to make sure that you've taken care of your wastewater treatment. Then you got, if you're on the sewer, you got to do it. We've got one spot. It can all be done online. So I would rather give you a service seven days a week, 24 hours a day. I don't know if you caught it. My business is the internet business. And so I would be looking at how we leverage the internet to lower the cost of government. Mm, love it. Yeah. David Carrington, you've really explained and answered all of the questions we've thrown your way and our callers have thrown your way. Here in the final moments, we, we've got about two minutes left here oh. before our music takes us out. Uh, what's the website people can go to to learn more about David Carrington? DavidCarringtonForUs.com. Easy and enough. And Carrington, just to be clear, C-A-R-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. That's correct. And the for us is I have four U's, and the U's talk about jobs, education, trustworthy government, and untangling the mess Un- in Is Montgomery. Is the yeah. number four or the word four? Uh, the number four. Thank okay. you. Yeah, David Carrington, number four, us, dot com. And then Facebook, David Carrington okay. for us as well. And Twitter, it's WD Carrington because they only give me like, 15 characters or something. I, I saw that. WD is a William David. <laughs> and are okay. we Snapchatting and Instagramming? That's We're not yet. <laughs> the, the, between running a business, being an active county commissioner, being a good dad and granddad and husband, and running for governor, my plate runneth over. Dad, but anyway, husband, I love it. grandfather. Seven grandchildren. Seven grandchildren. Yeah, wow. From 13 to 1. How do wow. they feel? How do they feel about Grandpa running for governor? I, I, next time I'll bring, we have a little adopted Chinese granddaughter, and I'll bring you the heart she gave me on the day. And, and, and then I announced, Aww. and she said that uh, she knows I'll be a good governor, but she'll miss me when I'm down in Montgomery, as if I'm moving to Bulgaria or <laughs> Argentina <laughs> exactly. or someplace like that. Well, but, you know, Montgomery does seem distant from it, all of us taxpayers. Yeah, yeah well, in some ways. At, at, at times. I, I'll be around here quite a bit. I mean, I'm originally from Houston, so, you know, an hour commute is just like normal. <laughs> there you go. Yes, exactly. Right, right. David Carrington, it's been a pleasure. Thanks Thank for being you. with Andrea and myself. I appreciate the invitation. Anytime. Just All call. Right. All right. Thank you. David Carrington, Jefferson County Commissioner, Alabama gubernatorial candidate. David Carrington for us. That's the numeral for us.com to learn more. Jay Holland's got a look at news next on the Yellowhammer News Radio Network. David from the Appreciate David Carrington being with us this morning. Boy, talk about uh, that filling to the expand the time given because he, we just had so much to yeah. talk about. 
Yeah, there's, there's no question. Going. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, we're not endorsing. I'm not endorsing candidates on the air by any means at all. But I will say this as a talk show host. I was the most impressed by David Carrington. I was very impressed by the answers he gave when we ask a question. He gave us answers. Are we not supposed to endorse people? Well, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to wait and see who I'm going to support because right now there's a lot of people out there. But, but technically, legally, we could, couldn't we? Oh, of course we could. Yeah, okay. Of course we could say we're, who we're, we're waiting. voting for. We don't want to show our hands. I will say hand. this. I'm impressed with David uh, Carrington. I agree. He, he's, I agree. He's up here. Yes. Yeah. He, he's, no question. He's a, he is a front runner. The only thing I think hurting him, and I said this uh, on the uh, on the air to him, I believe, or it may, it may have been off the air. This wasn't an off-the-record thing. I'll say this again. Um, David Carrington has large name recognition in Jefferson County. When you talk about North Alabama, Huntsville, uh, to the Tennessee state line, or, or Montgomery South, there's someone right now in Mobile going, who the heck is David Carrington? I don't right. know who that guy he, is. He, Isn't he a comedian? No, that's Rodney Carrington. Uh, some people don't know who he is. But to get his name out there and people hear his message, I, I think he's got a refreshing message for the people of Alabama. Right. So really, his he's got all that experience to to present mm-hmm. from what he did in the county as the commissioner. So now he's just got to get that message out to the rest of the state, and I think it, it'll it'll catch fire. That that was uh, that's the type of interview as a host when you interview someone. That's the that's the type of interview you want. That's how you want it to go. And I wish when we were talking to these Senate candidates and, and, and talking for congressional candidates and things like that, that's the type of answers I want to get back. The, I'm not friends with David Carrington. That's the first time I've ever met him. He impressed me. Yeah. We both met. All three of us met him for the first time. He impressed me, though. The, the, the thing that impressed me about it is he gave yes, no. Right. He, he and then could back them all up with facts, and then he would tell you why he had a right. yes or a no answer. But he didn't try to spin. Mm-hmm. Right. Like we've heard a lot, a lot of, of spin. Do. Yeah, we've heard a lot of spin in the it, Senate race, uh, especially yes. the Senate race. Especially. Well, I just I yeah. just love the way his thinking on that whole animal shelter thing. And That's beautiful. In which so many other people benefited. It, and it, you mm-hmm. know, and he just it was simply by asking questions, what if we do it this way? What if we do it that way? Instead of always as the government knee-jerk reaction mindset is, throw money at it, throw money at it, and come up with a new program that adds more money to it. Well, I love the fact he talked about Jefferson County cut 1,500 jobs, and and you could tell it deeply affected him that they had to cut 1,500 employees, and and now he says they need to hire, what was it, 400? 200, I think, 200 200 back. But now, because they went to bare bones, basic structure, they were able to reevaluate and determine where it's best used these, right. these new employees. Sometimes yeah. you can be wounded, but to have a successful surgery, it's got to get bloody. Right. And that appears that's what's happened. They they it had to get bloody. It had to get messy. And now they've cleaned it up and it's fixed. It's nice. And they're not overspending. Government overspending is a huge problem. And Jefferson County is not doing that. Yes, we had one lady call in who's upset about her sewer bill just because he's on the commission. Maybe your sewer bill hasn't went down. But look at the services you're getting, and, and I hate it when that happens, but that goes to prove that we're fair on this show. We're not screening the calls. Oh, here's a fan. Here's someone that loves David. Let's put him on. No, that was just open and honest. She's upset. That's a valid well, complaint. Well, and I'm kind of with her. Because That's a valid complaint, sure. Being a Jefferson County resident myself, my sewer bills have went up. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's he's only one person. He can't do it all. Right. But, but he gave a valid but, response and, and he answer did. why. Because he said it could have doubled or tripled mm-hmm. In two years. In two years. And, yeah. Well, I'm glad it hadn't because I can't afford it now. I would hate to, for it to have doubled. And then, you know, because your sewer in Jefferson County is in with your water. Right. So. You it, guys remember all the documentaries and all the news uh, articles and television shows talking about the big bankruptcy in Jefferson County, how oh, yeah. Jefferson County could become a ghost town and Birmingham could become a ghost town because the way Jefferson County was being operated, it was doomsday. Essentially, the largest municipal bankruptcy in American history. And Jefferson County's doing fine today. Emerged from a bankruptcy a year early. So sure, the sewer bills, you can complain about that day, much as the caller did. But overall, I, I think he gave an honest answer and showed their effective solutions to solve all their problems. I was impressed. Yeah. I mean, think about it. What a hideous solution uh, other people would have taken, which would have been to throw the the uh, p- the price increase on the consumer Mm -hmm. as if they're the ones at fault for the bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. And they weren't. They weren't the ones managing it. Mm -hmm. And yet that was they're going to be the solution. 
throw it on the, the taxpayer, make them take the brunt of it. Make as them if, spend more money. Make them pay more out of pocket for something they didn't do. 